Revolution, a word to make the mighty tremble. Light a flame of hope and inspire way too many protest songs. The Industrial Revolutions changed the way civilization works. And now, another revolution awaits. New technologies surround us. They change the way we communicate, travel, see the world. Most fundamentally, they change the way we make stuff cheaper, better, smarter, and hopefully safer too. The first industrial revolution was powered by steam machines. The second, assembly lines and electricity. And then the third, partial automation and computers. And now, Industry 4.0 the digital robotic age, all the way from steampunk to cyberpunk. How do you turn a factory into a smart factory? In one word, bling. Well, useful bling. Industrial sensors, connected systems, robots, software solutions, and all the other trimmings. Now, thanks in large part to smartphone technology, the sensors have become cheaper, they've become smaller, they become more effective. And the advantage of that is that not only can you inspect products as they come down the line? Not only can robots become more nimble, you've seen that self-driving cars are becoming more and more common. So Industry 4.0 is the advent of uh, utilizing uh, technology to collect and analyze um, data to make better decisions. But definitely, the technology is improving and we got only better and better with 5G and other things. One of the key pieces being automation in the form of collaborative robots. <clears throat> collaborative robots. So you want robots that's actually working next to human beings so that you can benefit from, from the cognitive uh, capability of human beings together with letting the robot do the heavy lifting. Because in future the hope is that effectively they can take on multiple kind of jobs and start to take decisions even in fields where they were not created initially. The robots can sense that there's a human being around them, sometimes with vision, sometimes with motion control, and then they can continue to operate around the human at a safer speed. And then there's 3D printing for potentially everything from machine parts and food to human organs and other 3D printers. The key is telling them when to stop. Technologies like 3D printing and simulation were for prototyping, for planning. Now, when you say production, it means that we can actually create things that have to work out in the, in the real world. There's now 3D printing of metal, 3D printing of wood and other materials. Even in construction, we're starting to see 3D printed houses and buildings. But the most important thing is that today, no matter if you're a small player, you can have capabilities in smart manufacturing using 3D printers. And the thread tying this together? the industrial internet of things. Just ignore the oil cooler gossip. You can gain insights into where the bottlenecks are. You can improve efficiency and productivity. The way to do that is you have to have sensors everywhere. The ability to analyze that data uh, is crucial in order for you to really engage and transform your business to adopt smart manufacturing practices. And one of the most valuable tools in digital twin technology creating virtual models to monitor and improve the technology and have everyone asking, Are we living in simulation? A virtual representation of both the elements and the dynamics of how an Internet of Things device operates and lives throughout its life cycle. Not only can you simulate and plan in advance how you might lay out a factory or a supply chain warehouse or something like that, but you can also then manage it more effectively. Supported by AI and software designed to assist at every step from manufacturing to logistics to retail. It's amazing the amount of different um, points of data that can be gathered now. With that amount of data, it becomes difficult to really actually digest it and understand what is, what is happening. And that's where AI can come into play. Artificial intelligence and machine learning there's the whole notion of uh, that predictive analytics. So helping to anticipate near demand, consumer demand. And then there's also the ability to make robots and all the production systems more agile, more nimble, more responsive to your needs. So the company can then select the appropriate solutions for their business and then connect them together via an API. All these innovations are affecting everything from automotive to aviation, from pharmaceuticals to oil, 
gas, and energy. For workers everywhere, it doesn't mean being obsolete. It can mean better, safer jobs, opportunities to work at home, or alongside our future robot overlords. I mean, robot partners. There are going to be lots and lots of jobs that are automated, millions, hundreds of millions of jobs that won't be needed because robots will do them. But there's no shortage of work that only humans can do. For the consumer, it's a new world of personalized quality goods, made cheaper and delivered faster than ever before. Please, like Egyptian cotton. You're delivering quality products um, and you're, you're maintaining a short delivery window as well. Uh, because you have you know, the ability to forecast demand and ensure that you have the right materials in stock to fulfill your customer's requirements. With personalization and customization, you could get, in theory, uh, sneakers that were 3D printed for your foot with the exact design that you like. And you can get the car with all the bells and whistles, but that you choose and not just off of a standard menu. So with uh, direct consumer manufacturing and the advent of like Shopify, WooCommerce and these e-commerce platforms, it allows manufacturers to sell direct to, um, to the end consumer. And that allows them to deliver a product usually at a lower cost to the end consumer. And the side effect of all this efficiency is greener, more planet friendly manufacturing. But with smart manufacturing, you can really fine tune your facility or your production so that there's much less waste. Government initiatives for smart manufacturing are also ballooning across the world with an estimated U.S. market size of 200 billion by 2026. R&D investment in robotics technology, that's increasing a lot. And it's not driven by the industrial robotics industry, it, it's more driven by the automotive industry, the, the, the large IT companies and public funding and so on. All governments realize to stay competitive, they need smart manufacturing. They need to say that we are faster, more efficient, more agile. Smart manufacturing is really a, a culmination of different technologies that help industries to be better, faster and more efficient in short, uh, ways to this. Now, it, it depends on the industry you're in, it depends on uh, what the technologies that you need, but anything that can help in this process, anything that can help in making your entire process leaner and more efficient, can come under the gamut of smart manufacturing. A smarter way to work, to shop, to build, to create a new world. Smart manufacturing release a lot of our time so that we can do what we are better fit to do, be creative. Enables consumers to get products that are made quicker, more efficiently, and better than before. And then customize those products to exactly what the market is looking for. It's just around the corner. To keep tabs on what's around the corner, subscribe below to get notified about new episodes.